I've got a turn on this one, it's a good one. Five thousand meters, here we come. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit rough there, wasn't it? Yeah. John Sylvester lives in Snowdonia, North Wales, with his young family. He's one of the best paragliding pilots in the world. He's been in the British team for many years, competing professionally on the World Cup circuit. But what he enjoys the most is wild flying. He has an experience of mountains and an affinity with air that has opened a new world of adventure for him. The attraction of going on a journey with a paraglider is the fact that the paraglider in mountains with no roads and with no other form of transport apart from walking, the attraction of a paraglider is the fact that it's a vehicle, it's an aircraft, and that's the beauty of a paraglider. It's small enough you can put it in a rucksack, put it on your back and carry it. It might weigh 25 kilos, all your equipment, but you can still just about carry it. But when you can fly, it carries you, and it can carry you maybe 100 kilometers a day. Pretty well all my life I've been really into having adventures, you know, small local adventures, just dis discovering things around where I live, and also bigger adventures. I've had loads of climbing trips around the world. And now I've, through competitions, I've learned to fly a paraglider, you know, pretty damn well. And so it just seems very, very natural to go exploring, using a paraglider as my means of transport. Well, that's the place that we ended up... For this trip, I've invited we along the filmmaker, the Alan Hughes. Well, just across the border, it's called Ascot on the other side. We've known each other a long time and trust each other's abilities. I want to continue my dream of flying along the length of the Himalayas, this time in Nepal, starting at the border with India and trekking east along the main Himalayan chain. We're walking across with stuff on their heads, but we're not allowed to. And this hasn't been done before? No, not this section. Not, this, not in Nepal, you've no. done it in India? Yeah. So yeah. this is part of your yeah. continuing journey? Yeah, yeah it is. See how far we can go this time. My last trip took me 500 kilometres along the front face of the Indian Himalaya. This time the plan is to use a dual paraglider, with both me and Al suspended under one canopy. I'll be flying it and Alan will be filming. We'll be completely self-sufficient, carrying a small tent and 10 days food. We won't be powered in any way, just relying on the rising columns of warm air to gain enough altitude so we can make a glide in the direction we want to go. Then we'll find another thermal and glide on again. Simple. We got a plane out of Kathmandu and when we landed at Nepal Ganj, we had about a 20 hour bus ride to get up to where we want to go. We're on our way up to find the takeoff that I saw two years ago from the Indian side of the river. We're now in Nepal and we weren't allowed over the border. So I saw this hill that we want to take off on and we're on our way there now. It's really, really hot, so it's been boiled. It makes you feel good. Uh, we're sitting here in our lovely hotel room, feeling a little bit down, really, at the moment because found a good place to stay and take off on a little coal at just over 2,000 metres but as you can hear at the moment the wind is really strong it's like a valley wind blowing up up over the coal and it means that if we're going to go flying tomorrow 
It's probably not going to be too dangerous, but we're not going to climb up very easily on thermals. And because the visibility is really, really poor, just like a, a smoky smog, it means we're going to have to fly back 40k into the mountains where they become big snowy mountains. And if we haven't got thermals, we're going to have to just jump ridge to ridge to ridge really low. And in a strong wind, that's not going to be very pleasant. The takeoff was scary, just broken thermals in a strong valley wind. So we're just trying to get up out of the valley wind. The vent will be sorted, I think, because there's good lift. We should get something off this hill now, yeah? Yeah. We flew from ridge to ridge, following the vultures, heading deeper into the mountains to escape the forest fires. We left behind our dirt road, the last we'd see in 400 miles, our final link with the mechanised world. But then, at the end of a long glide, we lost it. We were too low, and there was not enough lift. We were trapped in sinking air, in a bad place. Okay. Yeah. That was a downwind landing. You sure you're alright? Yeah, I'm okay. I, I hit I hit my bum, but that's just clothing back there. Yeah. You just snicked the top of a rock, I think. Yeah, that's I didn't right. want to put my legs down. Good, you did exactly the right thing. Oh, bastard. You alright? Yeah, you no. You sure but you're alright? Just the walk. We have to walk for the walk, now. Man, to you're all right. Here. That was absolutely horrible. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Such a good start. <laughs> Hello, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. You win some when you lose some. Yeah, and we won that one, didn't we? <laughs> we lost it, but then we won it down here. <laughs> Pretty close, I think. <laughs> We're both okay and the guy's okay. Oh. So if we had better visibility, we wouldn't get into this hole, would we? No, no. Well, it wasn't just the visibility. I made a bit of an error, but yeah, it certainly didn't help. You get low and then you suddenly go, where am I? But we've got a good mountain behind us. It's just a long walk tomorrow morning. But now it's to find somewhere to stay. I'm sure some of these guys are going to sort us out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Nakali. Yes. Nakali. So it's here. So hat, that way? Yes. Good. Nakali. We put a tick because we survived it. Just over 30k. It's a dead reckoning set about that, didn't it? Cute, cute. Doesn't sound a lot, but considering the conditions, it's all right, I reckon. Flag in a fog. <laughs> Yep. He's thinking as well. Did you tell him something? Yeah. Namaste. Hi. Yeah, I know what we're going to get out. Tell him what you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
There was one youngster at Nakali that had learned English at school. He told us we were the first foreign visitors to his village. Late the next day, we descended on foot into another village near Nakali, having failed to take off, and we were befriended by Sud. What, what do you do here, Sud? Now I am teaching. Secondary school? Yeah. Okay. I teach English also. Okay. When did you see the last visitors here? Uh, ten months ago. Ten months ago? Oh, yeah. Um, and before that? I haven't seen. I'm like, no, young No one know about, like, your journey. No one haven't seen such kinds of journey. So all are interesting and gathering here to look. <laughs> Let's hope we can take off today, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope we can and give them a show, <laughs> not like yesterday. <laughs> Skywards go, what are they doing? <gasps> must be amazing! It must be, wouldn't it? They haven't seen tourists and then they see two like us. Yeah! <laughs> it's cleaner air today. Yeah, definitely. They must be blown away by us. Straight above them. This is Ace! <laughs> This is that barrio! My mouth is so dry! It's a bit, oh. it's a bit pensive, wasn't it, before we took off? What, an audience just makes it worse, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. They were very helpful for you. Those are the hills we walked up yesterday. Yeah, it looks a long way, doesn't it? And today, we're as free as a bird. Oh, it's nice to be able to see where you're going. Isn't it? Just. It's, it's clear, isn't it? Not a lot, but definitely clearer. And so if it stays like this for a few hours, can you see what we're heading for, Alex, in the right direction? Oh, yeah. This is my Mario. We're on seven metres a second. That's quite good, and it's a pretty smooth climb, so... Well, we're as high as I've ever been. Yeah, we're up. Four seven. Might have been to four six. Four seven. Yep. Four thousand seven hundred meters. It's pretty high. You'd be noticing altitude if you're walking around, wouldn't you? That noise is Mavario, an altimeter which makes different noises depending on whether we're going up or down. Five thousand meters. Yeah. Four eight again. <sighs> and it feels cold. I need to stick a glove on. Yeah. Weather is on the change. Yeah, let's hope so. We'll have some days off then as well, Al. Oh yeah. And <laughs> you get even more worried thinking about it. <laughs> do you feel all right? Yeah, I do.
Suddenly, this was it. A moment of truth for me. We were in cold, sinking air on the north slope of a 5,000 metre ridge. Wild here now. The only way out was up and into the 6 and 7,000 metre mountains. You okay? Yeah. It's a bit rough there, wasn't it? Yeah. In a wild place. John was in his element and in control. All I could feel was the safety of the warm ballast disappearing beyond our glide range behind us. And then, just as I was about to scream, turn back, the sinking sound on the Vario changed. First to silence, then a blip. We were rising. This was brilliant flying. We're out of trouble now. Well, we've got to see what's over the back. And then we notice a new problem. There's a thunderstorm brewing. We're at 5,500 meters, and I'm scared to go any closer to the developing storm clouds. We've no choice but to chance a long glide, crossing glaciers in the hope of finding somewhere safer to land on the other side. Down here, John. Yeah. What are you going to do? Pull line. Pull on line. Looks a nice village. Yeah. I'm scared up there. Nice to be coming down. Yeah, I'd be glad to have a cup of tea now. <laughs> that was a great flying though. I mean, we were committed, middle of nowhere, glaciers, and we managed to pull it out and get over it. My mouth is so dry, man. Oh. Flying is fast. As soon as you sort out one problem, another presents itself. We have to find a safe landing spot quickly, before the storm hits us and before we lose too much height and end up in the Seti River down below. Yeah, I think this, one, this is quite a good option actually. Because if we go too low, we're going to the one. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> I got it right! <laughs> it's quite nice to be on the ground today, isn't it? Oh god, yeah. I found it scary. Yeah. Just got, I, I was almost pushing the panic button. Um, when we got into that curve, because to run out, there were lots of little ridges going in, and I thought we were all running out. Yeah. Yeah. Back in our way, yeah. And no people. Yeah. And now we look like we're in Tibet, yeah. although we're still in the pool. I think it's China. We're going towards Jumla. Jumla? Yeah. Jumla <laughs> Lake. Well, this is half an hour after we landed and I think it's pretty likely this is a big storm coming through. Down valley wind, so it's straight out of those 7,000 meter peaks. And if we'd been coming into land now, we'd be in deep trouble. So we've been pretty um, not lucky today. We, you know, we've sort of calculated quite right, but chance has been on our side, definitely.
What's amazing about this is the change from three hours ago when we took off on the um, Indian border. Now things are very, very different. And we feel far, far from the roads now. Oh, thank you. Karshang Lama, the headman at Dooley, invited us into his house for breakfast. We felt privileged because in spring, food is often scarce in these high remote valleys. Yeah, you know? Yeah, blood brother, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> they look very good. Yeah. And you eat with dal? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to go to the house. It's quite sobering to think, yeah, we are right in the middle of the Himalayas, only a day's walk from Tibet now, and we're a long way from roads. Um, we really are. They call it the Wild West here. If things did go wrong, yeah, we would be really in the middle of nowhere, and it would be pretty severe, I think. Hillside, the fires were on last night, isn't it? Those crackling fires, yeah. Ahead, yeah. They've all gone out. You see the hill just above us, all the grass is burned. As usual, we're running ahead of a storm, probably, so. In a way, although it's a bit dangerous, it's probably safe as well because it gets us on our way. South of those things, eh? Yeah. Well, to the south. Not too big. I think on the next glide we'll see the call. You can just see it on the end of that. Although we're in the middle of nowhere now, once we can cross it, <laughs> we can go for a glide for about 40 kilometres and get back to habitation. So that's the objective, and I've got to turn on this one. It's a good one. It's looking really good for us. It won't be as tensiony as last time, that's for sure. Well, let's hope not anyway. Let's not catch a chicken. Big sink going towards this coal, but there's a cloud building just before it, so hopefully we'll get our high. Just when we need to, we were getting really stuff because down there there's nowhere to land miles from anywhere and I took a bit of a gamble because I saw a queue forming on the other side of the valley ran for it huge sink and then as you can tell we're on a really good climb but if it hadn't worked that decision I don't know what would have happened Could be the Canali, I think. Yeah. Let's hope it is. 
It looks wide. God. Occasionally, when we were close to the ground at the end of a glide, we would see villages in their fields. So we waved to them to show we were human. You just want to get a bit more height. A bit of a, a bit of a nasty canyon at the moment. We're okay, but it's looking a little bit less rosy. That's our face major collapse there. Yeah, we saw the top of the glider for the first time, but it came out so easy. It's lovely. We glide out of the big mountains and end up low in the Canali Gorge. Things look bad and we might have to land. We might get up out of this hole yet. desperation we head off into a side valley and start to slowly climb the terraced fields. We're locked into our own world, totally focused on the flying. Then suddenly we hear shouting up above us. Election day in the Humla district. My immediate concern was that the armed police we spotted would not think we were Maoist terrorists, just a couple of floating voters. I was very close to landing then, just thinking, nah, I'll land here and stay here tonight. But yeah, we've got to climb. Now we've got to work out where we are again. At the end of the day's flying comes one of the most important decisions, finding the right place to land. We need somewhere high up on the hillside, facing the wind, so we can take off again tomorrow morning. Fuzzy coming down here. Yeah, we'll have a look. See, it's like an option if I glide won't make it over the canali, because it's takeoffable, no walking. I bet it looks a very good takeoff, and it's the largest hamlet. Oh, that's a pretty long day. I'm quite tired now, but hell of a fly. I mean, I think we've done, I don't know, 100, 100, 120, crossing amazing country. Now we've just come back into, well, civilization, really. So that'll be into wind. We can go a lot with terraces into wind there. That's better. Pick a field. Safer. Okay. Okay. Wow, it's still flying. <laughs> I didn't want to wear a shoot because then it would be on the next terrace's day. Oh, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Oh. We landed in a tree first. Well, clipped it. And then in the ground. <sighs> Oh, what a fly. That was the best flying. The best. Not as good as that other day, but it was much more relaxed, wasn't it? <laughs> no tension at all. We've landed in the village of Dharma.
When the sun is out tomorrow, then it's more easy, much better. Arma Departure Lounge Runway And then, if I couldn't run, there was no purchase, and then there was too much food. How's it feel? Okay. Good air? I don't know. Just dull air. got straight into a climb so a bit of luck there but the skies well over developing so we're probably gonna get thunderstorms don't know but we're going very fast at the moment so it's looking good basically be fine Climb above this ridge now, and then we should just be able to cruise along it. Hopefully, it's a double ridge. Yeah, lots of them are, aren't they? You can see the direction of Joomla now. Yeah. We 
glide past the remote Lake Arara at 10,000 feet, it's the major landmark in western Nepal. For once, we know where we are without having to ask anyone. Just trying to, uh, as usual, climb to get over another coal. That seems to be the um, story, doesn't it, Rowan? Need to get bulk height. We're, we're at 4.7 now. Yeah. But we need to get to over 5,000 metres probably now. And this climb's dying. Yeah, I think we might land here, Al. Yeah? We're into a headwind, aren't we? It's a bird. Yep, they certainly are. They're staying with me, which is nice. Of them. 5,800 meters at the moment, and it's very cold. Very cold. As we glide over the final ridge and into the Jumla Valley, I feel the first warnings of fear. Our glide has started to drift off leftwards and we're plummeting downwards towards the valley floor. So if we get out this valley out into the main one, we should be okay. But it's so rotary in here, it's ridiculous. We've flown into an avalanche of air and have got no choice but to ride it all the way. That's the roughest we had, isn't it? Well, the most worrying, yeah, because it's not firm, it's just right. We get a huge sink. Now, next, oh, next prop is. Oh! Next prop is how we need the main valley. I can see trees now and. Uh, don't look too bad. It's like we're coming straight down, so the wind's exactly our speed. What do you reckon? Well, I hope it's not because as we get lighter, it'll get stronger. No longer are we masters of the sky, it's controlling us, and all we can do is try and find the softest place to land.
Oh. It's got on top of it. Okay. Bottom it. You okay? <laughs> so we landed. As we landed, we got a real just hit us. Yeah. Like that. And we were off. It surprised me because I thought, oh, that's it, it's a nice landing. And then all of a sudden, it's mayhem. Mayhem, yeah. <laughs> but two of us tied together doesn't make any difference, does it? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Do you love it? Do you have chia? Oh, do you chia? Yeah, then the bad. Then the bad. Then the bad. Do you chia? Put over it, put it in the water. The days drift past as the wind remains too strong to fly. If anything, it's getting stronger as the monsoon approaches. It's not looking that good at the moment, this Tika Valley. It um, could be quite difficult for us to, to actually decide to take off. But we'll have to see. After spending a few lazy days watching the ebb and flow of village life, we decide our only hope is to walk up high into the mountains and have one final try. Well, all the way along this trip, whenever we've been gliding through colds, which is about two or three a day, you know, where two mountains come down to form a like a U. There's been two of these stone men often, probably marking trekking routes. And here, probably at the end of our trip, we've just arrived at our takeoff from this two stone men and it's like this gate that we've got to decide whether to go through or not. And I think it's probably going to be our finish gate. We're not going to go through this one. And it's weird, it's just sitting here on this takeoff and obviously the wind's howling and we're not going to take off. So we're probably not really going to go through this, we're going to go that way back down the valley and hopefully find an airstrip somewhere to get us out. After two weeks and almost 300 kilometers, we decide to give in. We've had the most amazing adventure, but my dream to fly along the whole length of the Himalaya will have to wait. <laughs> 